Here are seven reasons why you should go for the DJI mic over the Rode Wireless Go 2. Today I wanted to talk to you about why I think the DJI mic is a better option to go for than the Rode Wireless Go 2. Both of these systems offer really great solutions, providing you with two transmitters going into one receiver, which is extremely useful. They both can record internally as well, which is great for a backup. But despite that, there are some differences and there are some reasons why I think the DJI mics are worthwhile going for over the Rode Wireless Go 2. Now, just so you know, throughout this video, I am actually wearing a DJI mic so you can hear exactly how it sounds and whether it's worth you considering a purchase. Reason number one to go for the DJI mic, without doubt, is the case that it comes with. This is something that really the Rode mic should have come with in the first place. If you look at this, they give you this little bag where you can chuck your uh, mics into. That's fine, it's, it does the job, and I guess for the affordable price, you didn't expect much more. But certainly when DJA came out with this one with its own charging case and the fact that as soon as you flip it open uh, the mics turn on and are ready to go, it is just a much neater and smarter solution. With the Rode mic kit it is really quite frustrating having to plug in each individual transmitter and receiver to charge them. It means you've got to have three USB plugs all plugged in at the same time to charge them all up. Now don't get me wrong, they have really good battery life just as good as the DJI mics and the fact that they charge really quick as well over USB-C, it's not a major issue. However, being able to just put them all into one case and have one cable that you have to plug in to charge the entire set is much more useful. And that's a big reason why I would say these are much better. Now, it's not all perfect though. You do still have to carry a bag around with the DJI mic set. Unfortunately, the 3.5 millimeter cable does not fit inside this case. I do find it a little bit frustrating. You've still got to carry around a bag to keep things like your cables and other accessories in as well as the case itself. The second reason I'd go for the DJI mics is the fact you can control everything from the receiver. You can control both uh, microphones, their inputs, uh, their recording status, all the various bits and pieces that you would need to do with the actual system, all can be controlled from the small screen on the receiver. That isn't the case with the Rode Wireless Go 2 mics. There are some controls you can do by using the button on the side, and you can certainly see the status of uh, the mics and everything, but it's not as detailed as you get on the DJI mics, which is much more useful. You have to instead open up the app or plug it into a computer, which is just a really fiddly process and just something you don't want to have to do on set uh, when you want to change one of the settings. Although both mic systems do record internally into the transmitters, which is awesome as a backup, there is a big difference in terms of how they actually record. With the Rode Wireless Go mics, you have to use their app to actually convert the files that it records on your computer into a actual format that you can use, so into a WAV format, for example. While well, with DJI mics, they just record WAV straight on the actual device itself, so then all you have to do is plug it into the side of your computer, it acts just like a uh, mass storage device, and you can easily copy those files. That is quite a big deal, to be honest, if you're going to be using those backup files. I hope it is something that Rode can fix in the future, because they do have really intuitive equipment. It certainly feels like a bit of a barrier to entry for new filmmakers that they have to actually convert a file or computer before they can actually use it. It also seems quite picky about which USB cable you can use. You can't, for example, just use any old USB-C to USB-C cable into your MacBook Pro, which is ideally what you'd want to do. Instead, for some reason, you still have to use the actual USB-A to USB-C cable that comes with the Rode Wireless Go microphones. Otherwise, it seems to refuse to mount with the software on the MacBook Pro. Third up is the size difference between the two systems. Now, the Wireless Go 2s were already very small and it was incredible compared to systems we've used in the past how tiny these things are. But Rode, well, they've just managed to cut everything in half again. Both the receiver and the transmitters 
are far smaller than the wireless Go 2s, but not only that, they have a few other functions on how they can mount as well. Included are the clips, just as like you have on the wireless Go 2s, but you also have these magnetic attachments on the back, which is really useful for hiding the microphone uh, in plain sight. Right now, for example, I am wearing the DJI mic under my jumper here, and as you can see, there is actually a little silver tab just sitting there. That is the magnetic attachment that is uh, holding it on in place underneath my jumper. Now you can use both systems with a phone, but you will have to buy the right adapters separately for the Rode Wireless Goes, whereas with the DJI mics, it's actually included in the case. Not only that, it actually is part of the clip uh, system that it's got built in as well. So you can actually attach the receiver onto the side of the phone without needing to have a separate hot shoe uh, amount or something else to actually uh, attach the receiver. This creates a really neat all-in-one solution that works both across your phone as well as your professional cameras like the a7 IV right here. Not only is that screen really useful for control, as well as keeping an eye on the status of your audio, it also has some warning features as well. So for example, if you accidentally unplug the cable, it actually warns you that you've actually unplugged the cable just in case you've done it by accident. So you can see it there visually on the screen, it goes across the entire screen to remind you that you're not actually plugged in at that time. Finally, the DJI mic has a built-in headphone output on the receiver. Now, this may not seem like a big deal if you're using a pro camera with headphone output, and ideally that's how you would want to do it. You want to know that it's recording into your camera without any problems. But certainly if you're using a phone or a more affordable camera which doesn't have a headphone output, then this is a really useful addition to have. It just means you can actually ensure that the recording is sounding good. There's no rustling going on or background noises that might be a problem while you're actually shooting. Okay, you don't know what it's sounding like actually going into the camera, but at least you know the recordings on the transmitter themselves are recording without a problem at all. Now it's not all perfect when it comes to the DJI mics. As I mentioned already before, I do wish that you could actually put the cable inside the case so you don't have to carry around an additional bag. That is just one of those small uh, frustrations that I have. And also the actual 3.5 cable as well that comes with it is very stiff. It's just this kind of one single piece. I do prefer the sort of coil designs you get from other manufacturers, but that is a small sort of annoyance that I have with the system overall. I'd love to see a slightly more pro version with a locking 3.5 jack on the actual transmitters. That would be really useful to ensure your microphones when you're using a lapel mic doesn't actually uh, fall out of the transmitter itself. I'd also like to see 32-bit float actually inside of these transmitters as well being recorded. I don't know if that's just a limitation uh, and inability because of patents that have been going on, uh, but it'd be awesome if you could record 32-bit float actually in here as well, because then you'd have to worry about peaking whatsoever. In terms of sound quality, well, I'll let you be the judge of that. This is me with the DJI mic right now, and this is what the Rode Wireless Go mic sounds like instead. Which do you prefer? Do you think one is better than the other, or do you think they sound pretty much the same? So there you go. There are my seven reasons why I think the DJI mic is a better option than the Rode Wireless Go 2. I'd love to hear what you think. Do you think they are a better solution than the Rode Wireless Go 2s? Have you had both? Have you upgraded? Or are you looking to go for your first set? And which way will you go? Let me know what you think. Please like and subscribe as it massively helps me out. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.